Before we get into the definitions of systematic and unsystematic risk, I want to say one thing that I think is going to make this a lot easier for you to understand. When investing in assets that are not por perfectly correlated, meaning that they do not move exactly one for one, the portfolio's overall risk will be less than the weighted average risk of the securities in it. Um, and this is all just to say that from the perspective of portfolio management, diversification is good. This is the old saying, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. You can take less overall risk for the same amount of return by diversifying your assets. That is the whole concept between systematic versus unsystematic risk. Put quite simply, unsystematic risk is the risk that is eliminated through diversification. So let's say you're going to take shares of Coca-Cola. So Coca-Cola stock and combine them in a portfolio with 50 other companies' stocks. Then before putting it in the portfolio, you're looking at just Coca-Cola right now, this unsystematic risk is the risk that is solely related to the company of Coca-Cola that has nothing to do with the rest of the stock market or those other 50 other stocks. That's why unsystematic risk is also known as company-specific risk, diversifiable risk because it can be diversified away, and specific risk, specific to that asset or that company. Whereas systematic risk is the risk that is inherent to the whole market and cannot be diversified away. So think about it like unsystematic risk would be if you were to purchase just shares in Coca-Cola. You have the risk of this one specific company. Systematic risk would be what you have if, let's say, you invest in an S&P 500 index ETF. Right, So you're investing in the whole market and the risk that you're now exposed to is the risk that something happens to the entire stock market. That's why systematic risk is also known as the undiversifiable risk because it cannot be diversified away. You've already diversified your portfolio and what's left is a holistic market replication that cannot be diversified. And this is also known as market risk because it's the risk that is inherent to the overall market. Back when I learned about systematic versus unsystematic risk many years ago, it was this graph that allowed me to finally visualize and understand what all of this meant. So you can see on the vertical axis, we have risk. So as values increase along this axis, risk increases. On the horizontal axis, we have number of securities in the portfolio. So as we move to the right on the horizontal axis, we have more securities in the portfolio. You can see that the green line is labeled as market risk. So this is the amount of risk that is inherent in the market no matter how many securities you have in your portfolio. You could have every single security in the entire market in your portfolio and you would still have some risk. Um, a huge war could happen. Um, there could be another 2008 housing bubble burst, etc. So there's always risk inherent in the market no matter how much diversification you make in your portfolio. The orange line is the total risk in the portfolio. So this is your actual portfolio's risk based on the number of securities in your portfolio. So you'll see the less number of securities you have in your portfolio, the more total risk you are taking, right? And as you add securities to your portfolio, you're taking smaller and smaller amounts of risk. You see how this decreases and gets closer and closer to the green line, which is market risk. So the orange line diverges to the green line. And you'll see that I've marked 30 specifically because many studies show that after you have 30 different securities in your portfolio, almost all of the unsystematic risk is diversified away. So you can see that at any given point on this graph, the difference between the orange line and the green line is the unsystematic risk.